Like, nah, man. Yeah. Nah, man. You sexy, man. Yeah. You <laughs> hey, man. Excuse yeah. well, man. I gotta get me some color coded <laughs> headphones. Right there, man. That's, that's clean. Oh, right, man. Well, you know, like I said, I'm from Houston, man. I don't know if you can see it, but this. Very nice. Uh, Very nice. Ooh. Yeah. Houston Rockets beats. Man, I didn't even see that, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you're all set. That's very nice. All right, let's get yeah, into the yeah. show, man. Welcome, everybody, right. to the show. we got a very special guest with us today coming out of New York City. He goes by the name of Ken Boyd. He's a comedian. He's an actor. How you doing, Ken? Can you, in your own words, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, first of all, I'm doing well, man. Uh, and secondly, how are you? How are you? And third, um, hey, man, you know, very simple guy, man. You know, like you said, act, uh, comedian uh, first. And who... who who's been fortunate enough to do some acting. So, um, from Houston, Texas, performed that for years, and then I decided that uh, to get to the next level, I had to relocate, and then 2013, I moved to New York City. Been here ever since. You know, How funny, so. How funny man, and now everybody's going back to Texas. Right now, Texas is the hub. Yeah, man. Uh, I saw recently that uh, uh, Joe Rogan is opening a comedy club there. Dave Chappelle did a whole residency, uh, residency there for like a month straight, and they're opening like two or three new comedy clubs. So it's uh, it's Austin is is converging into one of uh, uh, a force to be reckoned with when it comes to the comedy scene. At first, it was New York and L.A. for the longest. Atlanta was making some noise, and now it looks like Austin is going to be uh, uh, throwing their hat in the ring as well. So we'll see what happens. Absolutely, absolutely, and and so you're man, you're the one of one of the one of the very few that remained in New York City. You know, you held the fort behind, man. Was there a reason behind that? Is that because you you stay in true to New York right now? You want to stay here and you want to keep your brand growing there? Why didn't you leave like most other people? Well, actually, uh, I did leave. I just kept my apart. I left, but I didn't leave. I don't know if I'm making any sense. But uh, when the pandemic hit and uh, New York shut down. I mean, let's be honest, this is the reason I, I moved here just for, you know, the action and the comedy clubs and the opportunities that exist here. So when everything shut down, I'm like, well, okay, well, what's the point of being here? My, I'm from Houston. My entire family is still there. So I went home. I was there for about a year. I didn't want to get rid of my place. I didn't want to move there. I just wanted to be there while New York was shut down, if that makes any sense, like an unofficial vacation. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah, so when everything was shut down, I was just hanging at the crib for a year and kicking it with my family and having fun. And because Texas never really shut down, mm -hmm. um, so I was still I was out there. I did a few shows, uh, you know, met up with some old people, man, caught up with some old friends. And then just recently, New York opened back up around April second, and I believe they're operating around thirty three percent indoors comedy clubs and things of that nature. And like next month or the next few months, they'll be back to one hundred percent. So. So once I heard that, I, I came back. So a lot of people left for good, said I'm done, and you know I'm going back to Kansas or wherever. So I just wanted to go and chill for a little bit because uh, you know I kept my place here, I kept all my stuff here. Just wanted to go kick it for a little bit, but once New York opened back up, I was right back. So, um, hey man, there's a lot to say about you making you coming back, ready to go full throttle though, because you know a lot of people oh, took yeah. that took that step back, and then it's real hard when you lose that momentum. I got a lot of people I've spoken to and. You know, you're hearing pretty often, you know, they were building up a lot of momentum. A lot of people were working a lot of things into into fruition prior to the pandemic. And then it happened. Mm -hmm. And you got to rebuild that momentum and that, that rebuilding of the momentum is is, is, a, is a hard one. And you came back to New York and you're ready to go full throttle. What are you hearing oh, in the yeah. clubs? What are you hearing in the clubs? Are they saying that uh, a lot of people aren't going to be coming back? So you got a chance of coming up, you know, more, more, more to eat for well, you, right? Well, I'm well. Some of that, I'm not very unique in the fact that, um, you know, I decided to come back. You know, a lot of people are just flat out from here, born and raised. There is their home. They, they didn't have a Houston to run to. They didn't have a, an Atlanta to go to, a Midwest or what, what have you, what have you. So a lot of comics uh, that are here are actually from here. This is their home. So when everything opened back up, when I came here and I went to a lot of the clubs, the same guys I saw, a lot of the same guys I saw, uh... You know, they were working the clubs. They were already on the scene. Or some guys are like myself. They were implants. They left for as long as they left, by as long as I left. And they're just starting to come back as well. Some guys went to L.A. or from L.A. or what have you. So um, this was a tree-shaking elimination type of experience for, for many comics. Um, some people left and didn't come back. Some people did. Once again, I'm not, a, I'm not unique in that regard. But I was always very confident in 
what I could but do. You, on but, stage. You, but you are a unique, Ken. So let's talk about you, man, because you are a unique <laughs> guy. So, so besides all that, man, let's talk about you, Ken. Born in in Houston, Texas, right? Yes, most definitely. Houston, that's the home. See, I, I'm always repping. You know what's so oh. funny? I rep so hard. Look what came in the mail today. <laughs> Just today, let me, let me I got to Oh man, that's so on, clean, man. man. Oh, come on, man. Check out my. Ooh. Come on, man. Check out the hood, though. Check out the hood, though. Ooh. Come on, With the man. hood on the band. That just came in. That just came in. But, but wait, there's more. Uh, uh oh, oh, with come the on, shorts. Man. Oh man, this... come on, man. Come on, check it out, you guys. Damn, man. Come man, on, that's son. nice. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Houston, Texas, man, born and raised. So every time I'm walking around here or I'm somewhere performing out of town or on a cruise ship, or whatever, I'm always representing. I'm always representing the home team. Always there, representing. There you go. Always representing, man. Very nice. Very nice. So, so were you the class clown, man? Were you the serious guy? Let's talk about growing <laughs> up, Ken. You know, getting into uh, that. Yeah. You know, how did we get into comedy? How did you discover comedy? Definitely the class clown. Um, as far as discovering comedy, I was always a fan. I was always um, drawn to the artistry thereof. Um, was it movies? Um, was it stand-up comedy? Were your parents watching comedy and you tuned into it and you said, man, that's funny? Was it, yeah. All, the of the ab- all of the above. All of the above. It was movies. It was certain actors that would catch my eye, comedic actors. Um, I, I, it, it's funny you act, the, it's funny you, you act that the way you asked it because you instantly transported me to a very particular memory. And um, I was, who knows how old I was. I was a child, I'm probably 10 or younger. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, something like that. And uh, so there's the main television that was in the living room and my mother had her own television that was in her room. And I remember turning on the TV and uh, Richard Pryor was on. He was doing um, uh, one of his specials. That particular special, it was called uh, Live on the Sunset Strip. Richard Pryor, Live on the Sunset Strip. That's when he has a red suit on, black shirt, gold shoes, right? And, you know, the, the iconic afro and all that. Damn. And uh, he, he did this one particular joke uh, about going to Africa. And... Um, him seeing the lions he was like yo <laughs> I, I remember the joke specifically he said yeah these are real lions this ain't the shit you see in the zoo you know he's like in the zoo there's no cage in between he, he said he, he said in the zoo you can walk through the cage they lying grabbed on his <laughs> he grabbed on his dick <laughs> but, oh, in event, but in any event I turned like back in the day you had to watch TV at a low volume because this is stuff you weren't supposed to be watching as a child Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you got to turn it down. But check this out. I turn the volume down so I don't get caught. And as I turn the volume down, I hear my mother's TV. She's listening. She's watching the same exact shit I'm watching. <laughs> Dad, she's watching the same thing. <laughs> she's wow. watching the same thing. I turn, oh, it down. I turn it down and she's, she's, it's on the same, it's on, it's watching the same thing. But yeah, so. Wow, uh, check that out. Experiences like that. My family is funny. My my family is naturally funny. My entire family. No one's not funny. Everyone in my entire family could easily do what I'm doing. I'm the only one who had the the presence of mind or the, the force or the the desire. But everyone, my mother's naturally funny. My father was funny. My sisters are funny. My aunts are funny. My uncles are funny. My grandmother is funny. My cousins are funny. Everyone is has the ability to create humor. You know, nice. but I'm so it, it's it's a natural thing, and it was cultivated through, you know, um, like you said, the movies and the it's certain inspirations, and then just years of repetition. So that was the origin. But Very nice. Very nice, definitely the class class, and, and that's awesome, man. But like you said, it's natural in the family, so it's not even that you were necessarily the class clown, but sometimes the class clown does it for different reasons, right? For attention, maybe something at the house, but like you said, you know, for you, everybody was just funny. You were just a funny guy, and you knew when to be yeah. serious. When you, you know, we all know it. Like you said, you're the artist, and that's awesome, man. That's cool. So you go out to New York to pursue to pursue comedy. Was that the go? You went out there 2013? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because um, 
I mean, you know, I'm from Houston. You know, Houston has a lot to offer um, in many different aspects, you know, culturally and artistically speaking. But there is a limit to the resources. There's a limit to the industry uh, that's available there. So, you know, at a certain point, you kind of yeah. got to get serious about what you're doing. Either you're going to say, well, this is something I'm going to do on the side for fun just to tell people I do it. And yeah, I do comedy shows on the side. And this is my real job over here that makes the money. Or if you really want to um, uh, turn this into uh, your source of income, if you really want to create this as your career, you, you got to bust a move. You either got to go left or right. You either got to go New York or L.A. I chose New York because above all, I wanted to become a better performer, a better stand up comedian, a better writer, a better observer, et cetera, et cetera. And I knew the industry for that was here. It's the mecca of stand up comedy, you know, arguably the baddest comedians ever either are, are either from here or they moved here to become who they eventually um, became so this is the perfect training ground the breeding ground because the crowds are harder uh, it's more competition it's literally thousands of comedians here but it's also more opportunities dozens of comedy clubs in Manhattan alone and then you add the other boroughs the Bronx Brooklyn Harlem Queens and all these other little small boutique shows that they have that restaurants and barbershops and all these beautiful struggle shows you get to do so it just really is it's the perfect training ground for you to get very sharp and um can we talk a little bit about uh, i didn't mean to interrupt you can we talk a little no, bit sure. about when you first got in there and, and, and started to perform at these places and that kind of reject, rejection and you know just working on the craft and just getting it together right because not there's a lot to say about you coming from houston making that move and having to make that adaptation, right? Because you can't do Houston comedy or New York City. You had to get in that flow of things. Can we talk a little bit about how you did that? Because, you know, starting is the biggest thing and getting over that fear and things of that nature. Yeah, well, um, for me, it, it, it was a, a minor adjustment. There's really no humble way I can say this, but it was, it, it was, a, it was a minor adjustment for me because... I had already, you know, performed five years in Houston, you know, from 2008 to 2013. Eight, 19, 12, 13, yeah, five years. Five years. So, uh, um, so I was, I was already. Um, had you ever traveled outside of the state to do any other type of comedy, or did you, you know, you gain your audience in Houston? You get, you did your work. And you've never taken it anywhere else before. Yeah, I, I built my fan base in Houston, but uh, I did very little traveling. I, you know, I probably stepped out to maybe a Louisiana, maybe a Oklahoma, or something like that. But it was all maybe it was all one state over. It was never like, Kim Boy, we want you over here in you know uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and nothing like that. So you know, it was something that somebody produced locally, and someone had a connection with someone in one state over. And, I know a guy that does a show over here. You want to do it? Yeah. So little stuff like that. Outside of that, you. Got you. Got you. Know, got you. But, but um, you quickly realize when you uh, uproot yourself and implant yourself somewhere else that funny is just funny. You know, funny is everywhere. I mean, if it's funny here, it's funny there. And your, uh, your writing broadens because, you know, I can't go to New York or anywhere else and talk about things that are culturally a uh, 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 Houston reference. Like, man, you ever go to French's and then the girl behind the counter at the chicken place? Blah, blah, blah. Everybody like, man, right, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, so... <clears throat> they might like a little bit about that, that flavor, maybe just a little bit, but not, not the whole thing. Exactly. So, um, I mean, you, it, it was eye-opening to the fact that, oh, wow, not only... I mean, like, once again, there's no humble way I can say this. It, the revelation was, oh, wow, I'm not just funny. Here, I'm not just funny in this place that I'm from. I can go here and be uh, rece uh, received the same way because funny is just funny. Funny Absolutely. is funny all day long, left and right, Absolutely. up and down. You know, so you come up with it's called your, your jokes need to travel because if the things I written was just uh, uh, Houston related, then I couldn't. I could go nowhere else and perform. But since I was able to, uh, you know be open-minded enough to um to write about things or to present things that that were a little more broad my jokes traveled so i could travel along with the jokes but it was minor adjustments minor adjustments but those type of shows i was speaking about 
builds character, it gets your skin a little tougher, and it just makes you that much uh, of a better performer. It's a beautiful experience. Nice, man. So the world got just a little bit smaller once you went out, went, went out there and you were getting those laughs, getting that positive response, and people were just like, okay, you know, you were like, funny is funny. You know, you didn't, you didn't know at first, but then you went out there and it was like, you know, it, it, it works. I can do my craft everywhere. It's funny. And you got right into it. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You adapted mm -hmm. and, and, and you went and you moved forward from there. Very nice, man. Very nice. Well, yes, I have a lot of... Exactly, yeah. Very, very nice, Ken. So cut forward now. So let's cut forward. You became a regular at, at all these comedy clubs. You know, you, you 2013, you're in New York. You've done, mm -hmm. you've done five, five years of comedy already in, in Houston. You moved to New York in 2013. We cut to, say, 2019, right? When around this, when this stuff was happening, you were already a regular at a couple of clubs, right? You were, you were, you were a regular at some places. You worked your way up pretty high. Yeah, 2019 was easily, easily my best year ever i was i was rocking and rolling 2019 i was um i was a regular at my my home club which is still my home club here in new york called lol comedy club it's in Times square which is uh, a big reason why my performance elevated because they were doing five and six shows a night and for six nights out of the week i was on every show so i was doing like 30 shows a week so with that type of repetition, man, you got no, you got no choice but to just to get sharp. If no you do anything, if you do anything that much, you're gonna naturally just get better at it. Right, if you're right, a mechanic, right. if you're a mechanic and you're working on five and six cars a day for six days out the week, you just you're naturally gonna get better than everyone else, right? Absolutely. So, uh, absolutely. So. So I was a regular there, and I was also doing colleges, and I was also doing cruise ships, and my agent was very effective. He kept me on an audition. I even landed some stuff like, um, uh, or even before I got my agent, uh, 2016, I got Comedy Central Heart, uh, I'm sorry, Comedy Central, Kevin Hart with, um, Comedy Central Presents Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. Then I got Showtime at the Apollo, 2018. Then I met my agent and he got me Godfather of Harlem. And then I got Last OG right after that. And then the pandemic hit. So I was, um, yeah, I was operating pretty well, pretty nicely. And uh, as a matter of fact, 2019, 2018, 20, that's right when I got this apartment that I'm sitting in right now. Wow. So every, everything was, I'm not upset at all. I'm, I'm grateful for the 2019, the fact that I was able to um, put myself in a position to be all right for 2020 and 2021. So it's been, uh, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was fortunate enough to experience that type of success to carry me through the unexpected for the last year, year and a half. One million percent, man. And you found yourself in a place that you were comfortable with and you had success to, to, to go ahead and bring you into a different in, in environment. Man, that's every lesson is a blessing and that, that, that's unpredictable stuff, right? You can't worry about what you can't control. We did yeah, of course, yeah. You got a nice yeah. place, man. You got some frames. <laughs> <laughs> he said you got some frames. My place is alright. It's a my place is alright. I keep a little. I keep a little artwork or whatever, man. It's nice, man. I like that. I got did you, the. Did you do that yourself with the, with the crayons, man? That's nice. Man. Yeah, like, man. Uh, hey, man. You gotta have some class, man. You gotta. Have, no, no, I didn't do that. Uh, I found that online and I liked it so much. I had to go ahead and get. It. I'm actually gonna give that away. I, I'm gonna replace that. Well, uh, cause what I did was, um, I was very big. As you can see, you know, I like interior design and all that type of stuff. So, um. Yeah. Nice. I found I found some more artwork to replace this, and uh, it's a good friend of mine. She loves this, so I'm going to give it to her. But what I did, as soon as the pandemic hit, I stopped cold turkey buying stuff for my place. So my living space is done. My bedroom is still under construction. Like, I didn't get a chance to make it there yet. So uh, as soon as I get back to work, I'm going to continue doing everything I want to do. I'm going to give that away, and I'm going to replace it with uh, another piece that I, that I found that's going to that's gonna work good here. But yeah, right. li uh, life has been good, man. Life has been very good. Life has been good, man. Very nice. You know, you had that all that success, and then you made your move, and then here you are, and you're making other moves, man. That's very nice. And you're ready to go full throttle and everything that once they open, you know, like you said, 33%, 30-something percent. So once we get around, get around 33% right now, and I think the next month, uh, yeah, I think next month they'll be back to 100. And they're go they're going to end the curfew. So they're, they're in the tail end of dealing with everything they've been dealing with and uh, in the very near future, everything is going to be full steam ahead again for the city of New York. 
nice, man. And what do you do when the state feeling like money and feeling good these days? You know, you've been working out, you you do reading, you've been audio books. What are you doing to, to keep that going? Oh man, I'm so simple, man. I'm so low maintenance. It's 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 not even funny. If I could just uh, get a good stretch session in a couple times out the week and have something good to watch on the on the box, man, I'm good. Some nice food I keep in the refrigerator. I'm eating a little healthier now. Now you know you get a little older, and you know you can't eat like a, a, a animal like you used to, and just you know eat every shove everything in your mouth. So I'm a little more conscious on what I'm putting in my body. Not as much as I could or should be, but a little more. So uh, I pull a I pull a yoga mat out, man. I get a, a full. <laughs> it, it sounds weird, but I pull a yoga mat out and I sprawl out on the floor, man, for several hours, and I get a good stretch session in and really keep the joints nice and loose and all the muscles and all that. And and after that, I you know I enjoy myself on the tube. I go out, I perform. I'm very low maintenance, man. If I could you know uh, perform on a regular. Keep my body nice and loose and have something. You know, I'm a big TV buff, big movie, big show buff. So if I can continuously have something and, you know, I like my place. That's why I like I decorated the way I decorate. So when I walk, when I'm sitting here for hours on top of hours or day after day, it's like, hey, this is a nice environment. So I got a good environment. I got something good to watch on the TV, man. Some good to eat every now and then. Like I said, I keep the body nice and loose. I'm a happy camper, man. Very happy nice camper. Look. Very nice. Low maintenance, but you get the essentials done, man. Hey, Goggins oh, stretches man. for like two and a half hours. If people don't know that David Goggins, man. Check him out if you guys don't know. That guy stretches for like three hours, man. And he, is that the uh, is that the runner? Yeah, that's. I mean, he, he does. Yeah, that's the guy who does the running, and he'll be like, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he uses the language. He's like, yeah, get off your fucking ass, you pussy. Yeah, yeah there you go, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that is yeah, yeah. man. I yeah, saw that yeah, dude in Hollywood, Hollywood once. Like, uh, you know, you're in Hollywood once you start doing small little gigs. It's New York's probably the same. You sit in for a little audience. You get some cash out the door. I don't even think it's cash anymore. That's, that's what's back when it was still a little bit good. But you sit for the audiences, and I saw that dude before he was on Rogan and all these other things and go, grew into fruition. And I was like, whoa, you know, you really take a... People like that are so vibrant, you know, the energy is so, is so, is so vibrant. And, and you as well, man, speaking with you, man, it's a real great pleasure and inspiration to go ahead and hear your story, man. You know, I like to hear that you, you do your stretching, you do, you, you like to take care of your place, you keep it clean, you keep it nice. These are things people oh, yeah. don't realize. People don't realize yeah, stuff, man. You know, how are you going to get work done? How are you going to create this great stuff if your, your place is not trash everywhere, man? You got the, you got, I, I got to do that. But then again, that's just me. That's my process. Some people are the, uh, the polar opposite. Some people might say, yo, I, you know, I need dysfunction. Right, you know, right. They, uh, got the, they got the McDonald's fries from last week right here still. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie Foxx, I, I hear Jamie Foxx uh, said several times in several different interviews, he says, um, I keep certain things, he says he keeps certain things in his home broken so he can stay grounded. So oh, he'll yeah. like... I don't know if you ever heard him say this, but it's like the piano, one of the piano legs might be a little off or there's a, a window. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something a little like, off. Yeah. like he keeps those things just so he can. Now me, I like everything to be pristine. I like everything. Everything has its right order. Plus I'm a little OCD. So yes, I keep my place. You know, it's like I can't even comfortably uh, sit and enjoy whatever film or movie or uh, show or whatever that I want to watch. If I know I haven't vacuumed in a week or two weeks or whatever, it's like so much dust and debris. I gotta get. I actually feel better when I, you know, I got when I know I'm in a, a organized, clean environment, and then I can, you know, wherever my mind takes me from there. You know, if I want to create, I can create. If I just want to do nothing all day, I can do nothing. You know, very low maintenance. I usually do my uh, creating in the moment on stage, and I say, "Oh, that's funny. I should keep that." But uh, for the most oh. part, I'm just I'm hanging out doing nothing. Low maintenance, fast pace, you're ready to take care of work, man. You belong in New York, man. You fit in. You, you, you fit in. <laughs> and I mean, and I mean, I mean that in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, you're no. fast pace. You know, you don't like to sit around. It seems like you like to take care of stuff. You don't do too much. You get out there and you do your thing. So it seems like an appropriate fit. You know, Los yeah, Angeles. I love, is, I love New York, man. I love, I love it. It's my kind of town, man. It, it really is, and it's just. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, it, it fits for what I'm trying to do. This is not a place you go to retire. This is for a young, able-bodied person that's ready to grind, ready to get to work, and ready to 
work their ass off and then make their money and then after that move to Florida or North Carolina or whatever, buy their house, buy their property, and live out the rest of their life. But just while you're here, you better be ready to hustle, man. You know, this is this is a hustle hustler's mecca. This is a hustler's headquarters right here, New York City. This is a get shit done city. You, know. you should have a sign, man. You gotta come full throttle because I feel like a lot of people, if they had that that reality check, that you gotta go in and be ready to work. You know, because there's, there's, that's what the reality is. You know, you gotta be ready to work and take care of stuff. Because there's a lot of people like you. People who watch this are gonna see what it's like. You wanna be a comedian? You aspire to do this, or even if you are a comedian, you know, check him out, you guys. He's in New York. He worked his way up. He was in the Godfather of the Harlem, man. That show is huge. Yeah, hey, it was. It was a, it was a good it was a good experience, man. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, I do one even better. Uh, my agent, my that's currently my agent. I met him at a um, a comedy festival in Billings, Montana, called Big Sky Comedy Festival, and uh, I ended up coming to second place in the festival. And so, uh, long, you know, fast forward, he signs me, he picks me up, and um, uh, with my ego intact, I tell him, I say, "Hey, man." You made the right decision. I'm gonna make you a lot of money. I'm gonna make you rich, man. There we go. And there so, we go. and just you know, I, I like to talk shit. So, um, some time goes yeah. by, and he he calls me. He says, "Hey, I got your first audition. I'm ready. You know, we ready to pop you. Let's go You're acting, Kerry. I got your first audition. It's some show on Epics with Forrest Whitaker. It's called Godfather of Harlem, right? So, uh, go out with it. I'm gonna send you the script. Have fun with it. Good luck." And that was my absolute first audition ever as an actor. And I got it. First one ever. So that kind of, it kind of solidified the shit I was talking. Yo, I'm going to make you rich. And he goes, he sends me out my first audition and I get it. Now I've gotten some things after that. But, you know, um, but that first one, I was really conscious. of. Oh, I got to nail this one because I already talked myself all the way up here. But I was fortunate enough to get the first audition ever went out on. Godfather Hall. And I was, supposed to, to I was supposed to die. They were supposed to kill my character. Right, the, in the script, in the script, it read, pulls out gun. The other guy pulls out the other gun, and it beat me to it. Boom, That's I get nice. popped. But they changed it the night before we shot it. I get an email from one of the producers. Hey, Ken, we're not gonna kill the Isaiah character. We just gonna hit him upside the head, and that'll be it. And I'm all right. So, um, you know, I come back. I, I cannot come back. But being alive is a lot better than being dead. So I'll take it. But uh, yeah, first audition, first one ever. Got it. And how that audition you when you went in there, man? That's insane. That's an absolute. I was, just, I was excited. I was just happy to be there. I, I mean, you could. T I mean, I was talking to people who didn't want to talk. Like people that worked in the building, it was so formulaic for them. So it was. It was another day. Like actors come in, they audition, they leave. I'm coming in. I'm talking to the receptionist girl. Hey, how you doing? You doing? <laughs> hey, I'm Ken Boy. What's your name? Tiffany. Nice to meet you. Hey, the dude. Delivering water. I'm like, hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Your name Brandon? I'm Ken. He's like, the fuck is wrong with this guy? I'm like, here, here's your water. And he walks right, out right. the room. So um it was just I was just excited, man. And I um even in the audition itself, I had so much energy because I was just so happy to be there and so excited to even just be going through the process. So um I ended up getting a role and they was like, yo, we like the way you played this. And I was just like, well, that was the only way I could have played it at the time because I was I was just so fucking excited to be there. So, um, I, I was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You didn't have to worry about all those other people because you were the talent. You went in there and that all went towards the part that you ended up getting. Yeah. I bet everybody yeah. wanted that part. Yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was good. It was a good experience. And, um, you know, it, it's beautiful on the resume. And I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be on successful shows. Yeah, you know, you ever see like a, a comedian's resume or an actor's resume that was like, yeah, I did... Uh, I was on a show called uh, The Janitors on MTV3, season nine. I right, was right. the guy. Right. Or oh, I, oh, I was on a BET original movie called uh, Behind Closed Doors or some shit like that. It's like, what the fuck? No one right. knows what this stuff is. I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to be on Godfather Harlem and The Last OG and the Showtime at the Apollo and Comedy Central. So it's, it's, it's been very, I've been very blessed to be you know, um, all, big names, all, big names. All, all, all a part of those programs. Yeah. So, so far, That's so good.
That's a lot to say about the men that, that we're speaking with, with just the level of work that you're producing, man, because, you know, you're there, you're working with these other people. That must have been insane to think a kid from Houston is out here shooting Godfather of Harlem. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, like, wow, boy, that's a full-on movie set, man. That's the way we film with a bag of chips waiting at, for lunch. You know, that's, that's mm -hmm. about it. That's about the movie set. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the funny part is, man, you know, I, I, I'm sure you can attest to this. Like you and I, we both know, even though we we ha we uh, operate in different mediums, you're gonna res. What I'm about to say is definitely gonna resonate with you because that's no blueprint to this type of success. If this was um, corporate America, there's a blueprint. You can say, oh, okay, well, all I have to do is work for this company and then do that and then start my own company and then do that and then. So, but this, you you literally blindfolded and then someone spins you around a hundred times and they say go out go figure it out so you just out like this like okay well it's success over here and you hit your head and that's not it and then you go over here and you bump your head again and then like okay well which way you know I, i'm just trying to be funny or i'm trying to you know start my podcast or build my brand or do whatever there is no real direction and everyone path is different you can easily look and say well look at dave Chappelle, look at chris Rock, look at eddie murphy but no one's path is the same when it comes to entertainment. So you really just you're con you're perpetually trying to figure it out and trying to understand it and trying to uh, solidify your voice and build your brand and look for those right opportunities and create certain opportunities for yourself. So, yeah, you want to be on TV. You want to get into movies. You have no idea how to do that. All you know is this. <laughs> this is it. And then in the midst of doing this, you find yourself where you always want to be. It's like, oh, shit. And if someone asks you, how did you do that? And you, it's kind of like, I honestly don't know. I just, you just start. You don't know where to go. You just start traveling, you know? And and then if you're diligent enough and hardworking enough and with a little bit of luck and a little bit of blessings in there, you can you can figure out some type of some type of path. So that's where I am right now. I've been, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, to be, hey man, my, my, my path is very, be. like you said, there's no blueprint, man, but uh, mm -hmm. that's a very, you know, like people, there's no, the situation isn't a tailor-made, you know, it's not a tailor-made thing, there's no cookie-cutter approach to making it in this business, that's for sure, but you're better off doing it your way from the get-go, because then you might have to trace a few steps back, All mm -hmm. everybody goes into this thing with a different thing, like, do it, do it your way. Be authentic, and you'll you'll receive it. Like you said, going back to your audition for Godfather of Harlem, you could have you could have you know received that negative negativity, or just that you know you could have fed off the energy from the people in the front desk. You know they're doing a job. Maybe the they, they coffee was a little bit cold, colder than they wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. But man, you went in there and you did your thing, and you got the job. And that's what it's about. And that's 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 an absolute inspirational story to hear for everybody that that hears that. You know, always do, always do you one million percent, and and, and you'll get rewarded tenfold. You know, always, always. The the, the path will forge itself once you yeah, follow. Exactly. Once you follow, you know. Yeah, exactly. Really trying to go. The, the path will forge yourself. All you got to do is start walking, man. Just start walking. And it's really tree, uh, uh, that's tree shaking eliminations it's in itself because a lot of people will say they want it. Yeah, I want to be this. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be on TV. I want to do or whatever. And then the work comes or the uncertainty comes. And then it's like, well, this is really not what I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to go back to this job as an accountant. Or I'm going to go back to working for my father. I'm going to go back to doing whatever I was doing. So, you know, a lot of people you start with, you don't finish with, you know, there's a, there's a, um, a phrase in the black community where we say, uh, everybody can't go, which basically means like exactly what I'm saying now, essentially like, well, uh, you well, say, you, want, you, you say you want it and you say, you know, you, these are your goals, but a, a lot of people, dare I say, most people are not willing to go through the wilderness and bump their heads and look like a fool and embarrass themselves or go broke or, you know, operate, operate within that uncertainty, you know, boom, because, boom, but just because you look like somebody, they're wondering what you have and they don't have. And that becomes an issue in many communities, mm -hmm. many things like that, right? They'll be like, why does he have, why don't I have him? Like you said, you just named all those things, man. You name all those stuff when you have men, sleepless nights, the, the work you mm -hmm. in, all that stuff. That's what we differentiate. Yeah, I, hey man, I didn't cry up here, man. <laughs> I didn't cry up here, man. Like because 
uh, I, I'll get I'll give you the abbreviated version of the story. I, I had a car when I first uh, moved to New York. I, I physically drove from Houston to New York. That's how I moved here. I put all my I just took my clothes. I didn't take anything else. Dumped all my clothes in my car and I drove here. Right. So for the first six months, <clears throat> I had a car here and I quickly realized how much of a liability having a car in New York is mm, like yeah. mass transportation is the way to go. That's why there's millionaires on the subway. There's millionaires on the bus. There's millionaires in cabs and Uber because having a car here is, is it doesn't even make sense. Right. right so right, right, um, right. I was constantly getting told I was constantly getting tickets. Right. And so this one time I get told, man, and the car was in my mother's name and I had to get documentation. I had to get a letter from her to say it was okay for me to pick up the car. I had to get whatever money I needed to pay. I had to get, you know, the proof of insurance, your ID, and all this type of stuff. Right so, I, I, yeah, it, it, it was so, you know, just fr infuriating. So I make sure I got everything. I go through the list, and I go to the place. I say, hey, I'm Ken Boyd. Here's the letter from the owner. Here's my insurance. Here's my ID. Here's the, here's the check. Here's this. Here's that. And they say, yeah, you look good, but you're missing... Like the place was not close to where I was staying. I think I was living in Harlem, and let's say I got told the place was in Queens or some shit. It was not mm. close. I had to take mm. three trains and two buses to get out there, and it was ice cold. It's the first time I experienced a winter like this, and it was New York when it was cold and it was snowing. I had this little pussy ass jacket on that was so thin, but I kept mm. thinking if I could just make it to my car, I could get in, turn the heat on, and drive back. All I gotta do is make it there. So I get there and I show them all the stuff. I got, here's the stuff. Here's this. Here's this. Can I have my keys? And they say, oh, you missing this. You can't give me a regular check. You need a certified check from the bank. I'm sorry. We can't give you the car. I'm like, yo, but you never fucking told me that. You told me just to give you the amount, to give you the cert, to give you a, a, a proof of insurance, the letter from the owner, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you say that? And I'm arguing with the guy back and forth. I'm sorry. You got to come back tomorrow with a certified check. So I'm walking back to the bus to take the two buses, to take the three chains back to my place. And it's cold and it's snowing. And man, the tears just start flowing like, man, this is bullshit, man. I, I can't. Do it. So, you know, I've I've experienced that type of frustration in like the in those moments to where it's like you have no one. You can't call anyone. You as a man, you have to figure it out and you have to get punched in the chin and punched in the stomach. And then, you know, come back the next day. But I came back the next day with the certified check, got my keys, and I drove home. But in that moment, it was just so, I was so furious that it manifested itself in the tears. You know, but are, are you willing to go through that? That's, that's the thing. You that's did that thing. as, a, as a, you made that decision. And as a man, you had to be like, you know what, man, we got ourselves here. We could have been in Texas. We could have been on the couch still doing our thing. But we're out in New York. We're trying to make it happen. And these are the trials and tribulations, man. Every lesson is a blessing. And it's an absolute circus. It sounds like going through that runaround. But you know what? Here you are today, better and stronger than ever. Looking sharp, looking smooth. smooth. Man, we're going to have a good year this year, man. We're going to have another best year. You said 2019 was the best, but we're going to get another best year. Yes, yes, because yeah, that's one hundred percent true. Because my agent constantly sends me out on audition or has me doing audition tapes, and there's a new show called That Damn Michael Shea that just came out on uh, HBO Max, which is very good. It's already getting good reviews. Now, I, I auditioned for three different roles on that show, didn't get any of them, but I'm thankful for just the audition. I'm thankful that I was in the works of almost being a part of something uh something else that that's Amen. Yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying and a lot yeah, of people yeah. don't a number of people don't have that same appreciation just for the process it's like well i should get this i should have this and this, this, this. yeah I, you know this person got it i should get it i'm just happy to be in the know or in the process that you know they didn't like me for whatever reason or think i was a good fit but I'm thankful that I have an agent that's in the know of the, his, whose fingers on the pulse enough to even send me out for such for such projects. So, you know, when everything gets back full speed, then, you know, uh, I'm you got the again? utmost confidence that, you know, uh, everything will get back to clicking like it was. So, so far, so good.
It's, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, Ken. We got to get you on again in the future. My brother, the pleasure was mine. I know the uh, I know the importance and the hard work that it takes to build a platform and having a platform. And I thank you for sharing it with me. I don't take it lightly. I know what it takes. I know the diligence and hard work. It doesn't pop as soon as you want it to. And you're getting 36 views here and 15 there. But this all like Kevin Samuels. This is this guy on on um, YouTube called Kevin Samuels, and he was doing videos for literally five years. But he made one that he called this woman average at best. Well, actually, she called herself average, and he agreed. And that was the one that took him in the stratosphere. So um, I I know what it takes to build these things and cultivate them year by year, episode by episode, tweak by tweak. And I thank you for having me and sharing your platform with me, brother. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ken. I really appreciate you for those words, man. You know what? I love what I do, man. I love doing this stuff. I've been making films for years. You know, I just started, you know, we, the show is new, but, you know, we've been, we've been putting stuff out for a while now, but this is, mm -hmm. this is a new one. It's really exciting. And it's, it's, it's been really exciting to get people like you on the show and to have these conversations. So we're going to keep going with it, man. And I really appreciate that. And, you know, it's going to pop up, man. I know uh, yeah. I'm, I'm confident you got to do what you love. And you're another gentleman who loves what he does. And I'm confident you oh, have a lot of success as well, man. So, so. Indeed. Much appreciated, brother. Thank you. Until next time, man. I look forward to coming back. All right, man. Sounds good to me, Ken. All right. How can we find you on social media, Ken? Oh, I use the same name for everything. I'm very uniform. It's uh, uh same thing. Same name for everything. Twitter, Facebook, Pimpstagram, Snapchat blackpeoplemeet.com Christian Mingle uh, for all the older people I'm on Ancestry.com whatever you want I'm on it it's uh, the Ken Boyd show that's me the Ken Boyd that's my name K-E-N B-O-Y-D show the Ken Boyd show put that in anywhere and then you can you can find me same I bear uniform alright very nice Ken it's been an absolute pleasure take care Ken alright stay black brother alright man Thank you, Ken. Thank you very much. Thank you.